Nagasaki When I watch a shonen anime, I always get a sense of excitement to the point I feel the same three phrases that Jump always states. That being, which honestly has inspired my three main series to this day. But during my years of growing up, I started to stray from the path that Japan delivers. I guess something in me wanted, I don't know, something different. And as I began to get curious on the internet, I came across a comic, a series called The God of High School. A webcomic that was created by a Korean artist named Park Young Ji. And as I began reading it, I started doing more and more research on the series. That was when I came across a plethora of webcomics. All created by Korean artists, these comics were called Webtoons. A webcomic platform that allowed you to read different comics from not only Korea, but from around the world as well. That was when I began to wonder, was Korea becoming the Sasuke of comics against Japan? Well, that's what we're here to discuss about. So get yourself comfortable with another BA's reviews as we talk about the three kings of Webtoon's success. As stated in the title of the video, I'll be reviewing three Webtoon's comics, being The God of High School, Tower of God, and Nobilis. The reason behind this is because these three shonen type series had become the forefront for Korean comics to expand. For one thing I believe is the artist has a sense of freedom when creating and writing their series. No matter which three stories you're reading, you can see a key element of purity in each character, with each of them being more diverse than the next, especially in The God of High School. But one thing I noticed when reading the series is I got a huge sense of familiarity. It was then I figured out that Young Lee stated in an interview that Dragon Ball Z was his biggest inspiration when writing The God of High School because he wanted to incorporate the outrageous aspects of Dragon Ball and put it into God of High School. Now, as most fans know, it's not hard to see that Dragon Ball went from a typical martial arts anime to power levels that don't have any real meaning. In God of High School, it's the same thing, from serious protagonist Mori Jin intending a martial arts tournament to literally fighting against gods. But even with the over-the-top action, The God of High School tends to explain the realistic martial arts techniques almost to the point it tries to make sense of the fantasy elements within the story. Now I will admit, the story does tend to get ridiculous at times, where even the characters themselves have broken the fourth wall, wondering what the heck is even going on in the webtoon. I mean, at some point as I was reading the chapters, there was a point where the main characters actually took a break from fighting after realizing they were still in high school and end up joining a school soccer tournament. Now, take into account this is a martial arts story, so the characters tend to go overboard when displaying their soccer tricks. Now, as myself being a soccer player, when I saw those chapters I could only think of one thing when I was reading this which led me to imagining this And followed by this. But moving on, I can say with certainty that because of God of High School is what dived me into the other two series, mainly Tower of God, which was one of those series that had the protagonist starting off with nothing to his name, but becoming the messiah of the story. Now remember when I said each series has its own diverse cast of characters? Well, while Tower of God has characters that are set apart from each other, the amount can be a bit overwhelming. There are characters that had reappearances where I thought, 
Who the fuck is this nigga, bro? Because there was such a huge gap between the character's first appearance towards their reappearance. Now, some anime tends to do this, such as One Piece, but Oda gives such life and death to each character well. When they do appear, the reader will know for certainty what chapter or arc he or she came from. Now mind you, the creator, Sui, waited years before publishing his series on Naver. So during that time, he was experimenting and deciding what course of action his characters were going. So what Tower of God lacks in character appearances, it gains with a structured storyline. More diverse than God of High School, when you look at the fighting mechanics of the story. You know Hunter x Hunter? It's pretty much a similar system with people having different class of abilities. But with the plus and minuses of what the comics give. Shocking though, out of the three kings, Noblest has shown the most promise. For reasons hard to explain, the series was actually so popular, it got too spin off OVAs, one being animated in Korea by Studio Animal, explaining the protagonist Rai and his life before falling into the 820 year slumber, while the other one being animated by the famous Japanese animation studio Production IG, responsible for Ghost in the Shell and Psychopaths, literally telling the first season of Nobilis. Now, I will admit, both OVAs were animated well by their respective studios, but overlooking the animation, I was puzzled by the fact Nobilis was getting so much leeway compared to the other two titles. It's not like Nobilis was groundbreaking, because I can't tell you how many series have done the whole concept of vampires. So, what was it? That was when I realized that compared to the other two series, Noblest was a well-bound story with its use of rememberable characters, structured storyline, and use of dialogue. Now, truthfully, the dialogue can be a bit much with its over-explanation of plot, but it does correlate with the rest of the chapters. Mind you, this was created by a duo, writers Shon Ji Ho and illustrated by Lee Kamagatsu. But the one thing I noticed was some stories created by a duo usually tend to have more dialogue and narration than single written stories. But when you really look at the bigger picture, it fits for the storyline, especially for Nobilis, when the main protagonist doesn't typically speak at all in chapters. Another thing to mention is that even though the characters do have their own respective development, the change can be very drastic. Take for example the character M21. He starts off as a typical evil anime character who in a way thinks of himself. Now of course as the story progresses, you start to see him for what he really is. A man who's been experimented only for him to live just to search for the noblest. But in reality his true goal in life is to escape his fated path and live out his life for his fellow brethren who couldn't survive the experiments in the past. It's because of this after several chapters M21 goes from a cocky show off to a somber support character with really no goal in life except to work for Frankenstein throughout the future chapters. This was the only downside in Nobilis, because it happens with majority of the characters having good development, but drastic to them both externally and internally. But you see, that's what makes these comics so great. It's the healthy judgment placed on these series that shows they can compete with the rest that Japan has to offer. Because it's what Mashiro's uncle always said. <laughs> And with each chapter the Three Kings publish, only more reads and exposure is brought to them as the days go by. Now, is there a reason as to why Webtoons comics have been attracting the public eye more lately than your typical shonen comic or anime? Well, overall, I believe it's the sense of the unknown. With some of the top shonen series, after a while, you kind of expect what's going to happen next. Because behind every great creator working on a series in Japan is usually being controlled by some editor that's literally pressuring them to create the same formula for pretty much ratings. But for Webtoons, the people don't see that because there's a range of unpredictability. There's no editor or critic pressuring Webtoons artists, and it's because of that I honestly don't know what's going to happen next within the stories. So the creator now has the free range to do anything they want in the series, which gives Korean manga creators an edge against Japan. And I believe it's those factors that attract the people to the three kings of webtoons. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. Be sure to give a like, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I will greatly appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in my next review. Until then, take care. Thank you.